praise the name of Jesus Christ. I greet you all and welcome you to the ministry of the word by Bishop Peter Gatimo. And we thank God because of his faithfulness. Our God is good and is kind to us, brethren. That is why we are preserved by our Lord because he's still molding us. He's still making us to come out the way that he wants. And the way that the Lord molds his people, the church, the ministers and uh, all those that stand before him is through his word. Welcome to this ministry, therefore, so that you can be molded and that you be equipped to the glory and to the honor of the name of the Lord. We are going to pray and then welcome our bishop so that he can minister the word of God to us today. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you. We honor your name. Your goodness and kindness endure us forever. We bow before you, King of glory. That even today, Father, our ears be open to hear what you are saying unto us, King of glory. That we may respond to you, our Father, that we may become better, better instruments in your household, O King of glory. We thank you and honor, honor your name. We bless you because of your servant, Bishop Gatimo, as he come to minister, Father, use him to the, to the glory of your name. Bless us and bless him. In just name we pray and give thanks. Let us now welcome our bishop to come and minister the word of God. Welcome, bishop. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. We are reaching out to you from Apostolic Faith Church. I'm Bishop Peter Gatimo. Oh, God is so powerful. Today we want to share the word of God on the standard of anointing. The anointing of God has a standard. Somebody said that charisma will take you up there but character will keep you. And we need to talk about the standard. What is anointing? Anointing is empowerment. It's empowerment by God. I say it is empowerment by the living God. Released on a natural person, just as simple as you are, that enables you, it has enabling element to do supernatural things of God, not of men, not of not funny magical things, the supernatural things of God. And by the way, anything that God does supernatural, it is based on the death and the resurrection of Christ. Actually, it is based on John 3:16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Whosoever believe should not perish. Look at that, 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 that scripture. It's just by unique love. Which when you respond to, you should not. It's interesting to know the Bible uses should. It is imperative. It is, it's a must that people should not perish. And therefore, anointing operates on John 3.16. The anointing of God. It is God's full of redemption love. It is calling people to believe. It is delivering us from what we call perishing. We should not perish. And today we want to, add to, see, the, to, to, to see the issue of anointing. Remember I've said anointing has a definition. It is God. God. Not men. Not funny, funny things. Not funny powers. God. Jehovah God. By the Holy Spirit. By the Holy Spirit. Because you can't have anointing if you don't have the Holy Spirit. It's enabling <coughs> empowerment by the Holy Spirit that enables a natural man who is committed to God to do supernatural things of God. God has an element of being supernatural. Anytime the Jehovah God we serve moves, he has that element. Bible is full of that. So, the standard of anointing. One, let's see Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah chapter 59. Let's go there. Verse 17. The Bible says, no, verse 19, sorry, verse 19. Mm -hmm. so, so, shall they fear the name of the Lord. From the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come like a flood. The spirit 
of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Now, we are talking about the standard, the standard of anointing. And the Bible says one of the characteristics of the anointing that God emits, releases, is that whenever Satan, whenever demons, whenever powers of darkness comes like a flood, whenever Satan uses people also like a flood, instead of slinking, instead of withdrawing, instead of getting confused, instead of getting suppressed, oppressed, and depressed, the Holy Spirit, Bible does not talk about my spirit. The Holy Spirit in you will raise a standard. And therefore, what is this standard? It is power to stop the enemy. Power to, to, power to do with enemy. You see, if, if, if you read Second uh, Chronicles chapter 20, when Jehoshaphat was faced by a fleet, a large um, battalion of, uh, of soldiers from neighborhood wanting to destroy uh, Jerusalem and Judah, he prayed and fasted and commanded the whole Judah to pray and fast and to confess the greatness of Jehovah. Whilst he was praying, the Spirit of God came and raised a standard. And said, Jehoshaphat, and no Jerusalem, the battle does not belong to you. It belongs to God. And God blot his standard for the battle. That's how God works. That's how God works. And that's important. Anointing also uh, burns, destroy, kills sin. You see, if you read Romans chapter 5, Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8. Let's go there quickly by God's grace. Romans chapter 8. We'll read three verses. One. If you live after the flesh. Verse 13. If you live after the flesh. You shall die. If you through the spirit. Through the spirit. Through the, through the anointing of the spirit. Do mortify the deeds of the flesh. Body, you shall live. Mortify is actually you let that those kind of feelings dead. You make them immobile. You make them inactive. You actually paralyze those desires. By the Holy Spirit, you can stop drunkenness. What a rehab rehabilitation center cannot do can be done by the Holy Spirit. If you mortify the deeds of the flesh by the power of the Holy Ghost, you shall live. It's like bringing something. There's a fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire. Bring it in the fire and the fire consume it. If you mortify the deeds of the flesh by the Spirit, you shall live. And if you go to verse 15, Bible says, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. If you check Romans 8.15, the word spirit is repeated two times. The first is small s. The second one is capital S. The Bible says, we have not received the spirit. We did not receive impartation. The spirit, can you imagine you have a spirit in you, as a, as a, you have a spirit, your own human spirit. But there's also what the Holy Spirit gives as your spirit, small s. You did not receive the spirit of bondage and fear. How? How does God Release this spirit. I like to understand this. Human spirit can be born again. Human spirit can be quickened. Human spirit can be changed. Human spirit can be activated. You have your own personality. You have your own limitation and fear. But the spirit of God can. can eh? This is your human spirit. 
comes and take over your human spirit and give birth, the same human spirit is born again by the spirit of God. He produces his own. You are born as John, James, Joyce. Your human spirit is full of fear. You have a very negative self-concept. You hate yourself. But the spirit can come, take your spirit, cover your spirit, absorb your spirit, reproduce your spirit, and then produce the same John. You are born again spirit of the spirit of God. So that we can say, after the spirit of God comes upon you, he did not give you a human spirit full of bondage and fear. He says, we did not receive the spirit of fear. That's the same, and the same thing is repeated uh, in, the, in 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Let's go to verse, uh -huh, verse 7. For God has not given us spirit. Capital S. No, small S. Small S. God gives a new spirit produced by his spirit. So you realize you are doing business. But the spirit in you, which has been produced by the Holy Spirit, is different. It says, we did not receive the spirit, small s, of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. What the Holy Ghost imparts on us is a different, totally different heart that is full of power, love, and sound mind. So, anointing has specification some people have received power but they did not go to specification the Holy Ghost comes on you anoints you but anointing you can receive anointing of a gift gift of healing gift of word of knowledge gift of miracle a specific anointing that releases specific performance of a gift in you there's a time you can receive spirit. The anointing you receive is a project. A project. For instance, God says to Moses, I have anointed you, and there's the anointing in you. You shall deliver these people from Egypt to the land of promise. I anoint you, Joshua. You shall cause these people to cross over and settle in the promised land. There are times God gives you anointing for a specific project that God has for his church. You realize that God can do that and can work in so many ways. Uh -huh. Now, it's important to know uh, another thing. Uh, there's other, so, so many things that the Holy Ghost can do. Another thing is that you cannot be anointed without prayer. Much of anointing is a product of one, in prayer, you change. So you receive discipline that can accommodate anointing. In prayer, the Holy Ghost will tame your mouth. The Holy Ghost will tame your feelings. The Holy Ghost will tame your, your mind, your attitude. So in prayer, you are tamed. In prayer also, you are impact, impacted. And that's why sometimes God will call us for longer, longer prayer. First of all, not to anoint us, but to mold us. In prayer. When you subject to God in humility through prayer and fasting, he molds your character. He breaks things that are not in order. Pride is broken. You are molded into a shape, the direction that God wants you to take. And, 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 and you are able now to change. Another thing is presence of God. Presence of God. Now, Psalms 91 verse 1, Bible says, He who lives in the sacred place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. If you read Psalms 91, you realize it is a psalm of a lifestyle. The Bible says, talks about the person who lives in the sacred place of the Most High. It also talks about the confession of that person. It says, he that dwells in the sacred place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I 
will you say? The confession is changing. Because I dwell under the shadow of the Almighty, my confession is changing. Anointing puts you at, in the sacred place of God. It's interesting. I don't know. I've come to discover that. Even demons can confess something about you. You know, sometimes we go to places and, and demons speak. Witches can speak. They run away. You are just a human, like other human beings. But you look at a witch and they, fall, they just fall down. And I realize, although I'm walking just like others, this scripture is real in my life. I live in the sacred place of the Most High. And whenever I'm ministering, I'm ministering under the shadow of the Almighty. And there's this product of this level of dwelling. I will say, the Lord is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in him I'll trust. When you are anointed, your confession, you change. You have a lot of confidence in God. A lot of confidence in God. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. Yes, surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler, fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover, the, cover you with his feathers and his wing shall you trust his truth and shall be thy shield and buckler. This is a kind of lifestyle where you never do any guesswork. You are so clear about God's cover. You are so clear about who you are in God. That is a standard of anointing that the God you produce in just Christ's name. If you look at David in Psalms uh, in First Samuel 17, David, after being anointed, he came up with a standard of anointing, a standard. When he went to see his brothers, and uh, Jesse said to David, take, take to your brethren some corn, some loaves, see how they are doing in the battle. And when he went there, he found something that he couldn't allow. David rose up and went and went and, and, and he followed what was happening at the battlefront. Israel and the Philistine had put battle against his army to the other army and David noticed something, that people are running away. If you go to 1 Samuel chapter 20, 17, verse 23, and, has, and has, as he talked with them, behold, there came up a champion the Philistine of Gath, Goriath by name, out of the armies of Philistine, and spoke according and spake according to the same ones, and David heard them. And all men of Israel, when they saw the man, they fled from him and were very much afraid. And uh, David, when he saw it, the anointing in him raised a standard. And David said, what shall be done to the man that kills this Philistine? And take away reproach from Israel. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? I, I don't say this. If you pray deeply, this level of anointing will be in you. Whereby, while others are running away, while others are saying and confirming, this is the end of, of this family. This is the end of this marriage. This is the end, the end of this teenager. You can rise up with a unique anointing and remove shame. Because David said, what will be given to this, what will be the reward to the person who will kill this Philistine? Kill, remove him, and remove shame, remove reproach away from Israel. And then the anointing in David has confession. Who is he, the uncircumcised Philistine, that he should defy the armies of the God? One, the anointing will always have a standard of God. And you always guard that standard. And you always start for it. Anointing in you will never bow to Satan. You will never bow to the enemy. Not that you are so strong physically. 
Not that your personality or whatever social status is high or low or wide or average or whatever. But the, the issue is, it doesn't matter their age. David was at the age according to, the, to, the, to Israel. But the anointing spoke. Who is this Philistine? Who is he? How can he defy the armies of the living God? Yes, anointing speaks. I would like to, to do something. Let it be known that the anointing of Christ in you has a standard. From today, speak, release it in your performance. Release it in your warfare. Release it in your business. Let the anointing not accept defeat. Let the anointing not accept failure. Let the anointing always know, even if I don't have money, the God I serve must have opened a way somewhere. Even if I don't have this way, the God I serve must have made way somewhere. Anointing cannot surrender to failure or wickedness. It always has something in it that sees God making way. Let that anointing be upon you from today. When you go to prayer, don't be on rush. Don't please remain on your knees. I've prayed for you and I know God will rekindle in you the anointing that was in David. You will not allow reproach. You will not allow reproach again around your life. God cover you from today. In Christ, I bless you.